Hey friends, Jeff Fritz here, and I want to take a minute and show you a little bit about what I was talking to my friends at Intel about when I was talking to them about augmented reality and using computer vision to overlay content on top of a camera shot. There's some really neat things going on there, and they showed me this article from the Parallel Universe, where they've done some interesting work with cameras inside of cars to show different information about how you can overlay data about vehicles speed and distance away over top of that camera shot really cool stuff i'll provide a link to the article just below here so that you can check out more about that but they showed me a little bit about how they did some analysis and how they modeled and tested the performance of that computer vision application really neat stuff using intel's flow graph analyzer let me take a moment and show you how the flow graph analyzer works to both model some applications that you might want to work with you might want to build using things like intel's threading building blocks or analyze an existing application and test and see where your performance bottlenecks are and identify and be able to tune those you can even generate source code directly from the tool let me head over and show you what that looks like over on the desktop. Here I am inside Intel's Flow Graph Analyzer. And I've got a canvas here. I've got some things that I can look at that'll help me help me model and build out perhaps how I want a multi-threaded application to work. Let me show you a little bit about how the modeling works inside of this tool. And then we'll move on and analyze an existing application like the one that's used in that augmented reality sample I showed you. I want to model a multi-threaded application that has three distinct branches. So I'll drag on to start a source node. Now a source node can take in any kind of data source and apply a lambda function to it to output some data that we could continue processing further down the line. So I'd like to set up three different branches of functions that are going to process the output of that source node. Now this top function will take in that data from the source, process it, apply a lambda, and output and hand off to another function node that'll take some sort of final action on it. I'll add some additional function nodes for each of these branches so that they can perform a task within a lambda function and output some information and we'll make the fourth one even longer with more steps now i can easily connect all of these branches to indicate that the output from that source is going to be processed by each one of these branches of our model here and this function will be processed by that function the output of this function by this one and so on and so forth all right, so now let's let's take a look at our model. Let's start assigning some properties to this so we can actually measure how much performance is being delivered by this. So I'm going to select the first branch here, and I'm going to specify the execution weight right here, the node weight. So this is for each one of these nodes. Let's say it takes 10,000 clock cycles. And I'll grab the second branch here and I'll say each one of these I'll set the node weight to 2000 clock cycles and finally for this last branch here I'll grab that and set my node weight to 3000 clock cycles. now I've got some relative weighting and timing set up there I can now actually measure the performance of this model by clicking this button up here and I see this performance reported and after the first node, after the first thread, I don't see too much performance improvement when I get to threads three and four, five and six, seven and eight. It doesn't improve. The way that this model is being tested, it's being tested with only one element passing through. Well, what if we open that up and we add more elements going through the process? So I can click the gear up here and choose the threading building block category change my scalability and instead of only passing one element let's pass through 10 elements I'll say okay to that and rerun my model 
And now you can see I get bigger performance improvements when those additional threads are added to the mix. Really great stuff that helps me measure and actually model how my process is going to render and run. I can now hook up Lambda methods to each one of these nodes and generate code from here if I so desire. Now, let's take a look at how we can do some performance analysis on an existing application. So here's the threading model for that augmented reality sample that I was talking about and we showed in the magazine earlier. This is a pretty simplistic approach and simplistic model of that exact application. It doesn't contain the exact capabilities, but for our purposes of learning a little bit more about this tool, it works. I have a source node here on the left where data will be fed into my application. It goes into a holding pattern here. It's going to be limited before it continues on in processing. An initial function will be applied to that data that's coming in. It's going to decode the image that might be coming off of my camera. I then have different functions that are going to be applied to that analysis, including an external object, some sort of device that will run asynchronously to analyze a little bit of data and we'll bring that data all back together here, further process it, and draw the overlay on top of my display and display it here with this final node. At the end of that frame that we've processed, we'll return and begin processing the next frame of our video. This way we get that augmented reality. And we can see all kinds of information here about how these nodes are processing and handling the data that's coming in from the output of our performance analysis. This is saved with the GraphML file that's written to disk. I can see on the left here in the analysis, I have this yellow area up at the top and a little yellow down here at the bottom. And these show just how parallelized the different nodes inside of our application are and how they're handling things. The ones in red, they aren't, they aren't parallelized at all. In fact, they're quite serial. Drawing an overlay is not something that we can do in parallel. Only one thread can draw a display at a time. And we can see here in the middle, the various concurrency overviews and processing and performance of all the various nodes of our application. I can even scroll down here and see how each one of the threads handled processing, including even that async device. This node up here, you see it it hands off and it's not blocking. The processor isn't doing anything while it's waiting for that other device to return from its processing capabilities. Now that's pretty neat, but I can also do some further analysis and figure out what's the critical path through my model here by clicking this button and it'll show me exactly what that critical path is. And it's right here. It's going through this node where I have some nested calculations taking place and ending up going through those serial repainting of the user interface. I can take a look at the statistics here and see further where I can optimize. What I really want to do is sort by that total time. Which nodes am I spending the most time in processing? And right here, it's that nested node that we're, we're waiting in. So if I optimize the performance of that node, I can make my entire application better. Really cool stuff. I encourage you to check this out. This is Intel's Flow Graph Analyzer, and I hope you take a chance to hook it up to your application and see where you can optimize, how you can improve the performance of your application. Check it out and get a download. Follow the link below in the description, and I hope you have a good time checking out your applications today.